shoulder pain really becomes an issue for a lot of people these days um, and it can be very very frustrating at first because it can seem like such a difficult challenge to solve the shoulder pain I know this myself and I'm sure if you're watching this you've had some kind of shoulder pain before and it can really really interfere with your training it can interfere with your motivation and your mood and your energy levels to do other things but the good news is that most shoulder pain can be uh, resolved without any serious um, medical attention or of course without any serious surgery the number one thing to remember when it comes to shoulder pain or for that matter any other joint pain or tendon ligaments muscles any kind of pain there's something that's very very important and very very useful to learn and that's what I want to share with you in this video so the first thing is that we need to keep moving right so if you get a shoulder injury or an elbow or wrist or knees whatever it is you have to keep moving very very gentle at first very very lightly at first but you have to move um, oftentimes the medical community will tell us once you've injured something oh just rest just leave it still let it recover it doesn't work like that of course once after you've immediately done the injury it can be very very useful to rest for 24 hours if it's a knee or a shoulder just to rest it just to let that inflammation go down a little bit to let the pain subside but very very soon after that you have to start moving through that joint area again the second thing to remember is that when you do start moving it has to be pain free so in the context of the shoulders you can start lifting stuff again in all the different shoulder positions whatever shoulder workouts you're doing you can start lifting again but it has to be very very low or preferably zero pain so what does that mean so in the context with me i used to have a shoulder injury it's, it's still recovering it's much 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 better but when i first had the injury i couldn't lift further than that like that's as high as my shoulder press would go so then that's what i did pain free right because if i went too high it started to hurt so if you start to feel pain in the movement that's your body telling you that that's too, too much movement or too far or too heavy so what I did was I went really really light and I went really really limited range of motion so that's it and as the shoulder injury started to heal and get better obviously I could start to go further then the pain barrier would move so those are very very important things to remember you have to keep moving and you have to move in an absolutely pain-free way that way you can keep moving keep rehabbing and eventually you will work yourself through the pain whether it's shoulder elbow wrist knees muscles whatever it is it's also something very very specific that i've learned uh, during my own injuries over the last year and a half um, is that we have to bring blood flow through the area so in the context of the shoulder let's say i've got a shoulder injury on the front of the shoulder there i have to encourage the blood flow to move through the shoulder so in this context, how am I going to do that? By moving below the injury, right? So the injury is there. I move the parts of my body below the injury, and that's going to draw blood down, obviously because there's work happening here. So it'll draw blood through the shoulder. It'll warm up the shoulder as it were by bringing this blood through that injured part down into the extremities. And that's the first step to resolving an injured shoulder. So what do I do, um, what did I do to recover from my injured shoulder? And it's actually something now that I do all the time, um, every day, almost every day, if not definitely every second day, because it feels so good for my arms. It warms up the shoulders and the elbows and the wrists, and then I can go and lift, um, go through my workout, whatever I'm doing with, with really good feeling body parts, which is really what most of us want. So... What I do is, because I'm treating a shoulder, I start to draw blood down through the arms by moving the lowest part of the arm first and then slowly working my way up to the shoulder. And I treat this as kind of like my warm-up before I actually start doing some shoulder work, which we'll get into a little bit later on. So what do I do? So the first thing I do, obviously, is just the wrist rolls. Just warming up the wrists, warming up the forearms. You can do those figure eights. You can do it with the fist closed. 
So what I'm doing is I'm squeezing my fists, which is really activating my forearms. And this becomes quite hard work eventually. You can do it with the hands open, of course. It's a little bit more poetic. But same thing, I'm moving the wrist, drawing blood down through the shoulders, down the, for down the arms, down the forearms, getting things going. Something else I do with the wrists after I've done those figure eights. I don't actually know what this is called, but this is just an old broomstick I had lying around the house. And I'm just lifting, lifting the hands, working through the wrists, <coughs> activating the forearms there. And obviously, turn the hands around, do it the other way around. You can see already. My veins in my arms are starting to fill up with blood. That's exactly what you want. You're getting that pump in the muscles. You would have heard a lot of people talking about the pump. And that's obviously when the muscles are just full of blood. The rule of thumb with all these movements that I'm going to show you, whether it's the wrists, the elbows, the shoulders, when we've got no weight or very, very light weight, we want to get to 100 reps. That's a good rule of thumb. And you'll know, like, when you get to the 100 reps of this, your forearms are going to be like Popeyes. The blood is going to be flowing. You're going to be feeling really nice and warm. Fantastic. Something else I do for the forearms. So, as you can see, I've got this piece of string with some metal bars in for some weight. This bit of string, I can obviously put it onto my broomstick as well. Um, and I just... Use a little bit of extra weight. It's actually just for some forearm strength work as well, but it works equally well. So now, in the previous section, you saw I was moving my wrist like that. With this tube, I'm now moving my wrist like that. So same thing, the 100 rep magic number. But I've got some weight on this right now, and now the work starts. That's it. And then I go the other way. See, now I'm bending my wrist the other way, downwards. So this is really activating on the top of the elbow, the bottom of the elbow, and again, drawing that blood down the arm. Most of these you can do without weight when you're just starting, but eventually it's good to add some weight to your wrist work because you do really want to strengthen the forearms. That's going to help you further down the line when you start to lift really heavy stuff. Often, it's not because we're too weak, it's because our grip is too weak, we have to drop the weight and we can't continue the reps, so forearms are very, very important. So next up, we've done the wrists, which has brought the blood through the forearms. Now I'm going to focus on more moving through the elbows. That, of course, is going to include the biceps and the triceps. For this, I just use a simple band, but um, you could use no weight at all again, you know, especially if you, you're quite badly injured. You don't want to use any weight at all. But basically, I'm just going to move through the biceps, pump the biceps like that, Really short range work. It seems a bit weird at first. We're not used to doing this stuff. But once you get to that 100 rep mark, you're really going to feel the blood in the biceps. Of course, if you want a little bit of of course, if you want a little bit of resistance, just a simple resistance band like that, and off you go. You know, after about 60 reps, you get a fantastic pump in the biceps. And of course, this is bringing even more blood through the shoulders. 100 reps of that, fantastic. Triceps are the triceps are a little bit more tricky, but of course, if you're going with no weight at all, a simple overhead tricep extension can really work. You don't have to go full range of motion. You can just kind of pump it halfway. You can do both arms at the same time. Already, you know, 10, 15 reps. I'm feeling the triceps nice and warm. Of course, you can use a band as well if you want a little bit of extra work. 
just kind of messing around. There's no real hard rules for this, but whatever you can do to find a little bit of tricep extension, it'll kick back there. Triceps are really firing up now. It's absolutely beautiful. So after I've gone through my wrists, my elbows, it's now time to move to the shoulders. What I always start with, which looks absolutely ridiculous, but it's well worth it, is just literally just pumping through my shoulders in all sorts of different angles that I can find. Of course, remembering the rule, pain-free movement. If any of this hurts for you, you have to go lower, go slower, go lighter. Do whatever you can find to make sure there's no pain in the shoulders. I close the arms a little bit, pump it even more. You can, you know, just do some, do some of that, some chicken wing stuff. You can move behind your back. I'm just trying to move the shoulder in all the directions I can think of and find to get the blood flowing through all the directions. And again, 100 reps, 150 reps. It actually starts to feel really, really good. So it's something that once you get into it, it feels really weird when you start. But once you get into it, it feels really good. This is an incredible shoulder warm-up. I'm feeling the heat in my shoulders. Absolutely beautiful. Once I've, once I've warmed up the shoulders nicely, I can then pick up my band again. I highly recommend getting yourself a couple of bands. Uh, they're fantastic for working out and especially for all sorts of different kinds of rehabs. So the next thing I'll do is just some band pull apart. The idea is that I'm really kind of activating the shoulder blades here, activating the back of the shoulders. So if you're using a band, if you're using a band for this, it might be quite tough to get to your 100 reps. So maybe you do 30, you take a break, I can really feel the pump in my shoulders, it's going to be great. You can also do different angles, so one arm up, one arm down, move to the full range of motion. It's really, really important to warm up the shoulder blades and the backs of the shoulders. I would say for almost whenever you're going to do some kind of an upper body movement, because what we tend to get these days, a reason for a lot of our injuries, myself included, is that we spend so much time on the computer, these muscles get exhausted or they're very, very weak, and the, the, the shoulders just tend to round in, and then we go to work out, and we don't know it, it's very subtle, we go to work out to be rounded in like that and what do we all love to do we all love to do bench press push-ups all those kind of things all in the front here making these muscles short and you know tight and strong and then you get the shoulder rolling in and you can get some shoulder injuries most shoulder injuries occur on the front of course they can occur everywhere but everything i'm showing you now can be very very useful for most if not all shoulder injuries I should say, if it's a very, very serious injury, you should get some medical attention first, a physio or a doctor, to make sure there's nothing seriously wrong with you. But in most cases, it's just a muscle or a tendon, which we can solve this way. Once I've done the backs of my shoulders, I'm back on the band. And I just wrap it around. And I start to do some chest flies. So now I'm just kind of pumping the pecs, bringing the blood flow through the shoulders into the chest. So I've got the blood flow going down the arms, I've got the blood flow going around the back, and I've got the blood flow coming in the chest. 100 magic reps of this, up and down, extended, close. 
anything you want, any movement that feels good for you, any movement that feels good for your body. And that's it. That's how I warm up my shoulder area before doing some rehab work with the shoulders. And that's it. That is a warm up that I go through almost every single day, absolutely every single day as a minimum. And my shoulder is getting, not only is it getting better, but I'm also getting stronger in all the other movements that I've, that I've been missing since I've had the shoulder injury. So once I've done my warm up, then I will lift a little bit of weight. Now remember, you have to move pain free and after you've had the blood flow. So now to get pain free, you can either go very, very light and full range, or you can go very short range, like limited range as it were. And the two movements I highly, highly recommend that you do when you're rehabbing and once your shoulder's better to build real strength and to build real strong shoulders is a bent over row and a shoulder press. So I've made a couple of videos about these before, but we're going to go through them again today. So for the bent over shoulder row, it just looks like that. Feet are kind of hip width apart, a little bit wider. Hinging at the hips, back is flat. So pulling the bag up to the chest, hands are quite close to the nipples, elbows are high, and I'm actually really pinching my shoulder blades together here, yeah, really trying to activate the back of my shoulder muscles as much as I can, and moving nice and slow. Now remember, if this causes you pain, you can just move as far as you can move. Maybe you can only move up there. Maybe you can only move down there. Whatever you do, make sure you stay pain-free. That's the bent over shoulder row. That was the bent over shoulder row. Next, I'm going to show you the shoulder press. So, just cleaning the bag onto the fists. The fist is the most comfortable for me, but you can hold the bag any way you want. Overhead shoulder press. Again, when I was dealing with my shoulder injury, there's no way I could lift the bag over my head like that. It doesn't matter how heavy the bag was. So I just started with what I could do. So even if you have, you know, only 10 kilograms in the bag, these short range pulses after a few reps, you're going to feel great. There's no pain, but the muscle is activated. The muscle is working. The blood is flowing. This way I'm still building strength in the muscle, but I'm not causing any more damage. And then as I get healthier, the reps get longer, the bag gets heavier, and the shoulders get stronger. I hope this video is useful for you guys. If there's any other If there's any other videos you would like me to make, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you'd like to learn, what you'd like to see. I'll do my best to help you and to explain. Uh, I'll do my best to get those videos made. If you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Leave a funny comment. I would love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much. That's a wrap. My video. Jesus, man.